Hey, how's it going? This is Joe Intel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the DDRC88A or 88BM, depending on which module you have. So first, let's talk about what this is. Mini DSP creates a bunch of different products that allow you to kind of enhance and tweak your system to your liking by adding delays, gain, and parametric EQ to your system. This is the same thing, but with eight channels, meaning that there's eight inputs and eight outputs. The thing that's different about the DDRC88A is not only the amount of inputs, but also that it has Dirac Live built in. So if you don't know what Dirac is, it's a room correction software similar to Odyssey and YPOW and the other ones that are built into other AVRs, except Dirac is something that I feel, in my experience, is superior to some of the other solutions. The tricky thing about this is trying to describe what this thing can do because it can do so many different things and for so many different use cases. For example, you can set it up if you want to set up an active system and do a DIY thing where you're separating out the bass from the mid range from the treble and using an active crossover, you're going to need three different crossovers. So you're going to need, you know, two inputs, but then six outputs, something like that. And so it would be good for that use case. But also if you want to use your existing AVR, for example, this is the use case I think is going to be the most popular is if you have an existing AVR and let's say you have Odyssey or YPOW and you have pre-outs on that and you want to use Dirac, but you don't want to upgrade your, upgrade your entire system. So what you're going to want to do is use the pre-outs coming from your existing AVR, go into this mini DSP, eight channels in, eight channels out, and then go to your power amplifier. From there, you can use Dirac within here to enhance the sound. Now, one thing to keep in mind, that's only eight channels, meaning the max that you can actually do if you wanna do an Atmos setup is 5.1.2 with one sub. And you can add other mini DSP units to extend and allow you to have more subwoofers, but just keep that in mind, the maximum with this particular unit is 5.1.2. So some of the other things it can do aside from, of course, Dirac room correction, which I am really very impressed with, is that you can do a lot of your own tweaking, a lot of your own settings with something called their base management module. It's an extra $99 and it'll allow you to do something that if you have an AVR, you would say, well, mine already does that. But what it does is it allows you to set the high pass and low pass crossovers prior to going into Dirac. So if you have a full range speaker or a speaker that can play pretty low, I find that you're kind of wasting some of the bass from there if you're cutting it off at 80 Hertz. And so one way I use this is I actually use that bass and I treat it as if it's its own subwoofer. And I'll get into that later on. And it's just something interesting that you can do with this. Now, first, let me just quickly get this out of the way who this is not for. This is not for somebody who just wants a plug and play system, something that's easy. It's very advanced. You can do a ton of stuff with it, but with all that functionality comes a little bit of complexity. That's just kind of the trade-off. So if you just want a simple solution, I would say go with an AVR that has Odyssey or whatever it comes with, or you can buy a processor that has Dirac, although you're gonna have to spend more, but you know, the NAD T778 that I have is a good solution because it's all built in, easy, it just works, you're done. So who is this for then? I would say this is for you if you're the type of person who likes to tinker and really tweak their system to try to get the most out of it. If you enjoy that process, if you don't mind that there's a learning curve and you have to really do a lot to mess around with this system to, to get it to sound perfect, but when you get it to that place, it's something that you can't do without using this device. And so that's who I think this is targeted to. And you know, if that's if that sounds like you, you're gonna be very happy with this. So this video, I'm not gonna go into great detail about how to use the app and how to use a software, install it, all that stuff. Um, I'm just gonna go quickly into it just to give you an idea. So first you're gonna plug it in. You're gonna have to have a U-Mic one, which is an $89 calibrated mic plug that into your computer. So I recommend having a laptop for this just because it allows you to move around and makes it easier for you. You're gonna have to make sure you have all the software downloaded for mini DSP as well as Dirac. You're gonna hit connect on the app. It's gonna connect to this device 
and you're in. So one thing I did was I disabled any unused channels. So in my case, I was just testing it out briefly on a 2.1 channel setup. So I didn't need the rest of the channels. So I went and disabled those. And that was handy because in Dirac, when you run it, it's not gonna try to run all the speakers, right? So you're gonna wanna do that first. You're gonna also wanna set the LFE routing. And that's a mistake that I made at first. I'm like, how come it's not finding my sub? Well, I have to tell it where to route the sub. And so, that's what's interesting about this. Typically, a subwoofer LFE is just taking whatever the other speakers can't play and it's delivering it to the subwoofer channel, a single channel. With this, you can get real particular and you could say, you know what, send the left channel to this sub, the right channel to this sub. And so you can do pretty much anything you want and route it however you want, set your crossover points from there, etc. You can also set the gain structure, which is advanced. I think you have to open it up. I had no problems with the gain structure. I wasn't getting any digital clipping, anything like that, so I just kept it as is. So then you run Dirac, you set the levels, you tell it how you want to set it up, whether you're sitting in one position or if you wanna optimize for multiple positions. And then from there, it runs all its calibrations, measurements, and then it spits out some graphs. From here, something different that I wasn't used to is you're gonna have to group the measurements. So left speaker with the right speaker, center channel on its own, and then maybe the rear speakers, whatever you have. And that's not something I had to do on my NAD, but it's something that you're gonna to wanna to do to group them together because you may wanna set target curves specifically for those speakers, or that might be necessary because you might have to set the specific ranges for those speakers. So you might say these front speakers, don't allow it to go below, you know, 60 hertz or whatever it is, but it might be different for your height channels or your rear channels. From here, you can change the target curve. It has its own default curve, which I'm fine with. If you feel like it's lacking bass, you may wanna try the NAD curve, which has enhanced bass, or maybe harm and target curve or your own curve. So this has four presets, which allows you to switch back and forth quickly, save them out, and then you can try different settings, see what you like best and it's just handy. So what does this thing do extremely well? Just the results that you get from Dirac. So this is not a Dirac specific video, but I do have to say that's probably the reason you're gonna get this because you want Dirac. If not, there are other options that you can get that have eight channels, less expensive options, things like that. You're getting this because you want Dirac and the results from Dirac, in my opinion, are the best. I mean, I haven't found that I can do a better job and that's the thing is you can do your own measurements, you know, you can set your own crossover points, you can do all kinds of stuff on your own without Dirac. It's just I find that their software is doing a great job time aligning, phase aligning, you know, really flattening out the response, not over correcting. And that's an issue that I find is if you're doing this stuff yourself, you may spend hours doing this and you can actually make it sound worse, but you know, Sometimes you don't realize because you've spent so much time on it. You're like, it has to sound better. And you come back a few hours later, the next day, you're like, oh man, it doesn't sound very good. Uh, with Dirac, I'm getting very consistent results. So what does it do okay? So you're able to use a remote with this. It's $15 if you wanna buy their remote although they have remotes that you can use and it'll learn the commands from those, but it's limited. It says here that it can use Sony, NEC, Apple, or Philips. I found that it works with this remote from SMSL that I'm not using. And so I'm able to change presets, turn Dirac on and off and change the volume from here. So that's kind of handy. So one thing I did miss is being able to connect to the app wirelessly without having to use this USB cable. And so that is possible, but you're gonna have to pay 75 bucks for their Wi-Fi bridge. The dial on the front is pretty handy for just doing simple things like changing your preset and setting your volume. So another use case for this is managing multiple subs. And you don't need this particular one. So I would recommend the something like the Mini DHP 2x4 HD if you have a two channel setup. You can have your left and right speaker and up to two subs and Dirac if you upgrade to that particular solution, they call that the DDRC24. And so any two channel person, I would highly, highly recommend something like that. But if you're using a home theater setup and you have two or more subs, this is gonna be awesome because it really allows you to get down and dirty and tweak each sub to your particular liking, especially if you are ready to use a third party app called MSO Multi Sub Optimizer. And what this allows you to do is you do your measurements for each sub in four different locations minimum, 
And what you're going to be able to do is it'll do time alignment for each sub, phase, it'll set the gain for each sub, and it'll tell you specific parametric EQ curves for each sub so that it's the best possible room response in each position. So that's the tr that's kind of the trick, right? So it's easy enough to get good sound in one listening spot, but the hard thing is the seat to seat variation, right? To have it consistent on this seat, this seat, this seat, this seat, and that's very tricky. So multi-sub optimizer uses an algorithm to figure out the best combination of curves. And it's something that you really can't do without a computer figuring this out. It's doing a bunch of calculations to really figure out the best combination. So that's something to take a look at. MSO, multi-sub optimizer, it's free, but it's Windows only. But I can't wait to try it out with multiple subs here in my living room. So some of the downsides I would say are that if you're somebody who wants XLR, you can do that, but you're gonna need to have a different connection for that. It doesn't have it built in, but you do have the option. If you're gonna be using this in a situation where they're not in a rack away from your main listening position, then you might find the LEDs are actually kind of bright. And so I have them here in the front and the LEDs, I'm gonna have to put some tape on them or something because they're too bright when you're when you have all lights out and you're watching a movie in the dark, you don't want any of those lights. And also be ready to have a bunch of RCA cables. You're gonna need 16 of them. So if you're someone who likes to get some pretty nice cable, it's gonna cost you. Also, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna definitely need a preamp and a power app. If you already have those things, then this might be a good solution for you. And as I mentioned earlier, the max you can go if you want an Atmos setup is 5.1.2 with only one sub. If you wanna go beyond that, you can get two of these. You'll have 16 channels and you can set it up so they both work with Dirac and they'll play together. It's a little bit complicated, but I found in a forum post that other people have made that happen. But uh, yeah, you're gonna need two of these. The other thing that you might be able to do with the MSO app is if you have some full range speakers, instead of wasting the bass, I think it might be possible to actually say, route this bass and treat this as a sub. And my other subs, so essentially you could have, let's say four subs, right? Your left speaker, your right speaker, and then maybe two subs in different positions. So then from there, you're gonna have multi-sub optimizer, blend all of them together, and really utilize all of the bass that you have from all of your speakers. I think that's a possibility and something that I'm very interested in doing. Another downside is this doesn't have Dirac Live Bass Control, so DLBC, which is essentially what MSO is kind of doing. It's, it's really trying to blend multiple subwoofers in the best possible way. And so it doesn't have that, whereas other systems do. Now, what are your, some of your alternatives? Now, if you wanted a 16 channel Dirac system processor, then you can look at something like the data set. I think it's 16 channels, but it's also like 16 G's or, you know, 16 to $20,000, something pretty pricey. And so for $2,000, you can get 16 channels with this, but again, you're gonna need to have an AVR with pre-outs and you're gonna need a power amplifier. You also have the Monolith HTP1, which is a processor built in, and it also has 16 channels of Dirac, and it also has Dirac Live Bass Control, the thing is that that's $4,000, so twice the price. If you don't already have a processor, it might be something that, that might interest you, might be a good way to go. But if you have some of the stuff already, like an AVR that you like, you know, it might be something to consider. It's gonna be tough. You're gonna have to find out which solution is best for you. So if you're a two-channel person, make sure to check out the Mini DSP DDRC24, and that is two inputs, four outputs, instead of this one, which is eight inputs, eight outputs. But it also has Dirac. You can also do things like the multi-sub optimizer, things like that. So make sure to check that out. That's half the price. And of course, the final alternative is just to use your AVR and not use anything external and allow it to do its thing with its room correction. You can get the NAD T778, which has Dirac all built in, but again, not cheap at $3,000. So I hope that helps you decide whether this is for you. If it is, 
in my opinion, this is a great device. I can highly recommend it if you are willing to play around and learn the software. I think it's really awesome what it can do, super powerful. So thank you to Mini DSP for sending this out for me to review. I really am enjoying using it. I still wanna play with it a little bit more and try it with different configurations. But anyway, hope you liked the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Take care, bye-bye.